Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ed Shanley. I am the Public Relations Manager for District 40, and welcome to our YouTube channel. Today, I am like super excited because we have Don Dehoff, who is our District Director for District 40 with us. So I'm like, ah, oh, so excited. Yay, jazz hands. So, all right. So Don, welcome to our YouTube channel. Thank and you. I, I know you've been involved with Toastmasters like forever. So how did you originally get involved with Toastmasters? Wow. It seems like so long ago that I started my journey, but I started at a corporate club where I'm still a member for AEP Toastmasters. And it's a wonderful environment to practice some of the skills that I needed to develop for my job and interface with other people in the company. It's actually fascinating that I've met more folks from around my company just by being within Toastmasters and visiting other Toastmasters clubs within the company than I ever did in my job, just because we tend to work with a lot of the same people all the time in my job. But with Toastmasters, I have had an opportunity to speak with and and compete with and attend meetings with company employees from all over the place and also to interface with corporate leaders that I would never have had the opportunity to uh, to interface with. So being part of Toastmasters not only helped me develop skills for my job, but it really helped me to get out there and meet people and learn more about the company that I was a part of. And that's how I got started. That's awesome. So you, you mentioned skills that you learned in Toastmasters that have helped you in your job. So what are three skills that you've learned in Toastmasters that have helped you with your job? Three, that's a tall order. I'll say that the first skill that I've learned is really how to speak on your feet. When I'm in a meeting that I'm perhaps not supposed to be a part of, or maybe I'm just a, an ancillary member, but someone asked me to give a status report or someone asked me to talk about how could we do a project to, uh, to help this, uh, this aspect of the company move forward. Being able to put together some thoughts and sound intelligent when responding to that kind of question really goes a long way to helping me advance my career and to be part of projects that are fun and interesting and have an impact on what we do. So the ability to put my thoughts together quickly and speak just like we do in table topics has really paid dividends for me. I'd say something else that has been a, a great skill for me is writing speeches, writing down my thoughts and putting them together in such a way that it is not just a series of bullet points. I think we all know those managers or those presenters at work that speak in monotone and they just list off a bunch of bullet points and it's really not entertaining to hear them and it's not engaging. And I think the, the tragedy of that is that someone who may have a good idea comes away from a presentation where their audience has really not absorbed the material that they've put forward because they've delivered it in such a way that people tune out. We need a little bit of an entertainment. We need a little bit of an engagement in the in the, the speeches that we hear so that we can retain that information. And now when I give a presentation at work, I have a lot of vocal variety. My facial gestures are engaging and I call on the audience. I engage the audience. I try to ascertain what their mood level is and try to interact with them and it makes it makes it so that I leave an impression on my audience. And I've learned that over the last few years that people will tell me in different ways that either my presentation style or the material has made an impression on them. And that's the goal with communication, right? Is to leave an impression on your audience. So hopefully they come away with the 
material that you want them to remember, but at the very least you want them to remember you. And that has, has really served me well. And I have to say leadership. It may be cliche, but we don't often get the wide variety of leadership experience that we have available to us in Toastmasters. I have gone from a member who didn't really know what he wanted to do in his company or what he wanted to do in his career to someone who now has had experience leading project teams, giving status reports, motivating members, dealing with conflict, and now being responsible for leaders who are responsible for other leaders has given me a perspective on leadership and how to get things done that I never would have had without Toastmasters, or it would have taken me a lot longer. And, and I would have been on the verge of retirement before I learned most of the lessons that I've learned so far. That's what I've learned and it's served me well in, in my career and, and really helped me engage more in my path and in my company. That is awesome. So as you know, you, you mentioned leadership and, and opportunities that you've had in Toastmasters. So let's say I'm a rank and file member of District 40, right? I'm a member of a club or I'm a vice president of membership. And I'm like, you know, I want something more than just Tuesday nights between seven and eight thirty, right? Like, like I want more. Like this is not enough of a challenge. I want more. And so I look to District Forty and I say, "Whoa, what opportunities are out there for me to grow in District Forty? What would you advise somebody like that?" Certainly, I would start with congratulations. If you are watching this and you are saying to yourself that I've paid my dues to be a Toastmasters member and I have goals, I have goals that I want to achieve, congratulations for taking that bull by the horns, if you will, because this is not an organization that steps you through everything, that holds your hand. This is a self-study organization and you are responsible for your own destiny, which gives you the entire horizon to work for in Toastmasters. If you want to be a professional speaker, you can do that and your Toastmasters family will help you. If you want to become a leader, then you can start by becoming a leader in your club and you can start as big or small as you want. Some people have jobs that are really taxing and don't leave them a lot of time to devote to Toastmasters. Be an assistant. Assist your vice president of education on submitting awards and encouraging members to give speeches. Assist your club president and be on a special project team to work on how do we improve the culture in our club or how do we improve the experience for members who are connecting remotely to our hybrid meetings. There's opportunities throughout your entire club on how to get involved and, and become a leader in your club. And when you're ready, I encourage you to step outside your club. We have many, many opportunities in the district every year for those who want to serve and those who want to build their skills. Oftentimes, those who step outside their club will first become an area director which is a wonderful opportunity to be in a position to help the club leadership of four or five other clubs, answer their questions, give them guidance, support them, help engage them in the process. And you can really feel a sense of accomplishment when you know that clubs that you were an area director for four became successful and they were able to have that success because of your guidance and the resources you provided them. And then you can move on to become a division director if you want to continue on that, that journey. And a division director assists area directors, helps area directors get the skills that they need and break down any barriers that they may have in helping clubs succeed. And of course, if you want to continue on that leadership journey, you can become one of the leaders in the district. You can become what Ed's doing, a public relations 
operations manager. You can become a logistics manager and help the district manage the district store and manage the technology and supplies that we have available out there for leaders to, to use in, in meetings and events. You can become a club growth director, which is what Mike McCoy is this year and work on helping the district grow with additional clubs and help grow membership in our existing clubs. You can become the program quality director for the district and concentrate on aspects of training and education, our leadership training, our conference, all of those things that enable leaders to get the training that they need. And then if you're, if you're really up for it and you really want to do it, you can become the district director. And as a district director, you are the cheerleader. You are the resource that all the other leaders go to to help them succeed. And that's really what your passion becomes, is helping those leaders succeed, encouraging them, getting them the resources that they need, answering questions, connecting them to other leaders so that they can do the work that ultimately helps our members succeed in their journey. So to answer your question, Ed, if you are a member that is looking for something more, there are leadership positions throughout the district. And we are in need of area directors right now as, as a start. And we have a division director position open. And we have many committee positions open where you can make a difference. So please reach out. As a first step, you can ask your club president or your area director what opportunities are there. Or you can reach out to Ed or myself. And we'll get you sent to the, the right resource to match you with your skills. But there are needs in the district for help, but there are also opportunities to get you the skills and experience that you need on your Toastmasters journey. That's awesome. You know, I, I think one of the things that I love about District 40 and about Toastmasters in general is there there are positions out there for everybody and you know like you don't have to say okay i'm going to be an area director in order to serve you can sit on a mm -hmm. committee for two months or three months and say you know i'm going to do this for an hour a week for two months and that's all we need you for or if you do have that time and energy and you're like yep i actually want to, you know i want to delve in i want to grow more there's opportunities for that too. So that's the thing I absolutely just love about Toastmasters. So, yeah, if you, if you have a little bit of time to donate, we have positions for that. If you want a full blown position uh, that's gonna give you a lot of different opportunities to lead, we have that and we will always work with you to try to find a position that works for your needs. Absolutely. I know I have people on my committee that have said, I'll do the work, but I don't want to go to any meetings. I'm like, okay, if you're willing to do the work, I will, I will take that. So that's awesome. Now, uh, just two other quick things, because I know you have a limited schedule today. So I just want to try and keep this short. You just got back from international convention, didn't you? I did. Tell us about how wonderful and awesome that was. <laughs> Who did you meet down there? What did you learn? How, I mean, fill us in. It was, it, it was incredible. It was in Nashville, Tennessee. We were at the uh, Gaylord, uh, the the Gaylord Grand Opry Hotel, of some sort, and it was it was a huge experience. You walk through this hotel and you just see Toastmasters everywhere, having conversations. You see the international president, international president elect, past presidents, international directors. You have international speech contest winners from the past walking through the halls. It's kind of a celebrity sighting environment. You see all these people that you've seen in Toastmasters magazine. You've seen them on stage. You've seen videos from them. And the best part is you have an opportunity to chat with them. I had conversations with our incoming, our, our new now international president, Matt Kinsey. And he's so wonderful. He has a great background. He has a passion for Toastmasters, a passion for service. And that was one thing that really struck me is having the opportunity to see firsthand that the leaders that we have at Toastmasters International really embrace a, a, a service. You know, they embrace servant leadership. They go through a lot in the 
the process of becoming vetted as a candidate and interviewing the you know, Mike and Lavinia and I spent hours, 17 plus hours interviewing candidates. And we're just one district. They, inter they interviewed with districts all over the world and spent countless hours over months and months to interview and talk about who they are and, and what makes them a candidate, the best candidate for that office. And that's, that's a lot of work for someone to go through for a volunteer position. And I admire that. And when you hear them talk about why they want to be on the board or why they want to serve Toastmasters, you really feel that passion. And it, it helps inspire you to know that in addition to all the wonderful members in the district that we have who are serving those that are working towards improving the district and providing opportunities for members, we also have leaders above us who are there to support us in our region advisors and our international directors and other board members on up to Dan Rex, the CEO, who was also a, a wonderful speaker and a wonderful servant leader. It was inspiring to be around that group. And it didn't stop there because you meet members from a, a first time member from a, a club several countries away who's made the trip to be at the convention to uh, district directors from our region who I've come to know and work with and admire and rely on for support, meeting them face to face and having lunch with them, having wonderful conversations about how to work through this time of, of membership decline and this time of challenges with hybrid meetings. It was wonderful to be able to share your story and hear other people's perspective and then do that in an environment where Toastmasters is center stage. We had presentations galore going on the, the entire conference. We had presentations on how to re eliminate bias from your communications and from your, your meetings and your interactions with others, which really gave me a perspective on how do we make sure that we're being inclusive in our district to make sure that everyone who walks in the door at a club feels like they are included, encouraged, and have an opportunity to grow as a member. It really got me thinking about that. And all of the sessions and all of the opportunities that we had at conference, at convention, excuse me, really put us in that mindset of how do we succeed this year as leaders of the district? We had training for two solid days where we just attended sessions that were helmed by international directors, region advisors, other luminaries in the Toastmasters world. And they passed on their knowledge. They answered our questions. They gave us opportunities to collaborate with one another and find best practices from around the world. And I guess that was probably the next biggest thing that I experienced at Toastmasters is the international part of Toastmasters. There were contingents from all over the world and from, from China, to the Middle East, to England, Canada, Australia, all over the place. And to hear their enthusiasm about Toastmasters enough that they sat on a plane for how long to get to Nashville, Tennessee in the United States to be a part of convention uh, was incredible. To feel that energy and to hear different perspectives on how they do things. Because just like one club is different from another, one district is different from another, and countries do things different than other countries, all under that umbrella of Toastmasters. And it was just really exciting to, to feel that. And of course, we had the international speech finals and semifinals. And they're always wonderful speakers. And to hear their messages and to hear their intensity 
and how much they believe in what they're speaking about and the the challenge or the uh, you know the experience that they've had that's reflected in their speech it it moves you it really does to to be moved by their words and their their experience was truly inspiring and it it always gets me excited to see what district 40 members will do when it comes to the speech contest so i'm excited to see what comes next it's always a wonderful opportunity to attend a convention and next year it's going to be in nassau grand bahamas so it's going to be fun in the sun for sure if you have the opportunity to go to convention either this next year or any year i highly recommend it it's for everybody it's for the brand new member and it's for the seasoned member to experience what others out there who have been touched by Toastmasters, how they feel and how they relate their experiences and, and what makes it personal for them. It's, it's, a, it's really a life-changing experience every time I've been and this year was no exception. And I got to see many folks from District 40 uh, who also were at the uh, convention and our region advisor Jacqueline Payne uh, was there and we had some opportunities to interact with her and meet our new international director for region six Dawn Frail and talk to her and the other candidates for region uh, six and just see how they are still working together even though they were competitors for that position they're still working together and talking about how they can support one another it's it's such a supportive environment. And I think it's, it's reflective of what we wanna see in clubs. We want clubs to be an environment where members can work on their Toastmasters journey, but be supported by their fellow members, be inspired by what their fellow members do and feel that they can achieve great things in their club. And that's what you get when you go to international conventions, you, you get that inspiration and you get that drive uh, to do great things in Toastmasters. And I hope that I've taken away some knowledge and some experience and some connections that I've made at convention that will help me be a better resource for all the members of District 40. It was a great experience. And uh, like I said, I hope you all have a chance to, to visit convention sometime in the future. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, Don, I, I know you've got to go, but I do just want to say thank you so much for taking your time out today to, to uh, have a conversation with me. I want to thank you for all the hard work that you've done in the past for this district. I also want to thank you for all the hard work that you're doing this year as district director. Um, I want you to know, and there's an um, so please don't count that against me, okay? Ding. Ding, Yeah. But I, I just want to say thank you because I, I think so often our, our leadership positions are are not thanked. They're they're like this job that we do that nobody realizes that we're doing it until something goes wrong. And so I just want to say thank you for all that you're doing. I appreciate you. You are an incredible resource for this district. And I I just want you to know how much I admire you. I thank you for stepping onto our YouTube channel for doing this crazy thing that you had no idea what I was putting you through. And so I just want to say thank you. I look forward to continue to working with you for the rest of the year and have a great weekend. Thank you, Ed, and I appreciate you as well. I appreciate all the leaders of the district who have stepped up and who, like you said, do a lot of work for the district and aren't thanked enough. We can't thank them enough. I tried to thank uh, Lavinia and Mike for all the work that they do all the time and thank Ed Shanley for all the wonderful support that he provides us and all of the leaders in our district that are working every day tirelessly on behalf of the members. Thank all of you. Awesome. Thanks, Don, and we will talk to you soon. Take care, Ed.